Okay, it's a lightning talk. I have to be very, very quick. So, um, oh, it's working. So, first of all, a little bit about me. So, I'm a RPG player. First time I'm here in Seattle. And as a uh, old school RPG player, I always played Shadowrun. So, this was my imagination of uh, Seattle. And then when I arrived here and walked a little bit through uh, Seattle, I found out that, yeah, the Space Needle is a thing, but there are no dragons and no magic. So, this just something. So my manager who sees this now is like, what is Engin talking about this? But the real topic is uh, gain platform superpowers with the kebab stack. And this is going to be a lightning talk. So I'm really breezing through this. So it's like my daughter when she sees sweets, you know, nothing, no two minutes and everything is already gone. So the same one. If you want to talk, come to me later on. So my name is Engin Diri. I work at Pulumi as a customer experience architect. If you can hear from my voice, I'm from Germany. I could also play a bad guy in some kind of die hard game uh, movie. So that's a thing. I like cloud transformation. Okay, let's start with the problem. So this is the really interesting thing. So what is the problem we have now? And we f keep in mind what setting we have. We're on the GitOps con, we're talking about platform engineering. So this is a typical scenario. Take or leave it what you will find in companies, depending on the maturity level, how they build their application. So you have some kind of CI, CD going on. You have a deployment to different infrastructure. If you're lucky, there are some monitoring and load testing stuff. And if you're very lucky, there's automation going on. So as I said, and now, we, we breeze on top of it, and I'm 100% sure the CNCF will never invite me for any talks anymore because I bring up this picture all the time and they think I want to show something bad. But actually, what I want to show is the huge confusion we have. You know, you have so many tools, so many things doing the same stuff. And now, think about the thing I presented you at the beginning. It's not always one way. There are multiple ways. So the, the, uh, inside your company, you have people who deploy on a serverless environment. You have people deploying on a Kubernetes. You have people deploying on different cloud providers. So everything really becomes uh, a big, big pain. So that's one thing. So people smarter than me, 100% smarter than me, they come up with some kind of DevOps maturity level. So first of all, just go into the DevOps maturity level and you will see where I want to go now to, to, to connect the dots. So the first level they define as ad hoc. I mean, you can really say everybody does what they want to do. Uh, it's a really chaotic stuff and a fragmentation like hell. This is something you will find still nowadays. The next one is some smart people management probably say like, hey, this is a way we cannot sustain. It's not possible that everybody has his own stuff going on. Is there a way to, co co uh, to consolidate this stuff? And uh, first POCs are made, some results are collected. So we call this uh, the proof of concept stage. And then we come to the next one. Uh, it's the org-wide adoption. So the thing we find out during our proof of concept stuff is like, hey, it makes sense. Let's roll it out. Let's reach out new uh, teams inside our organization and show them what we build and try to get them also on board. So there are some properties on this one. Sorry that it's so small. It looked on my screen much bigger. Um, the next point is the sustained and repeatable level. So here we have now implemented some DevSecOps going on and it's uh, uh, in the implementations across different teams and there is some kind of governance going on and we have also some kind of tracking and reporting. So think about Dora matrices and so on and so on, uh, which are implemented. And then of course the God mode here, we have the, uh, the optimized DevOps. So everything is really working in place, lessons learned, you have a continuous feedback uh, loop going on and uh, yeah, uh, you can really see the outcome of your DevSecOps thing. So I picked up now one thing to say, okay, what is with the sustained and repeatable phase? So yeah, this is where we as platform engineering point in. So this is exactly the, the, the moment you should think about platform engineering. And this is a definition, again, everybody has his own definitions what platform engineering is depending on the company and whatever they are talking, they have different opinions on this. For me, platform engineering is a practice of building and operating a common platform as product for technology teams. So that's, that's one thing. And um, you will ask me like, hey, Engin, how do you build a, a successful platform? Understand your customers and uh, yeah, you are here because it's much, much more difficult to understand your customers Technical is everything works fine. I'm 100% sure everybody of us who comes with a technical background can implement an IDP, uh, whatever, in a certain time. But the, the real struggle comes now also with uh, talking. So that's a thing. I, I mean, we had always problems uh, talking, reaching out to our customers, find a way to reach out. So, okay. 
Um, if you tackle this, so there are some responsibilities now as a platform engineer we have to keep in mind because developers are 10 time devs now, why not platform engineers? So one of the things you need to have uh, as a platform engineer is, uh, I mean, some of the responsibilities you're designing and implementing the infrastructure, you're automating the application deployment process. Hey, GitOpsCon, yeah, that makes sense. Providing, this is also very important, providing troubleshooting support. So when you start to build your golden paths, and you, you announce the golden paths, and there is a problem with one of the golden paths you, uh, you, you, you expose for your customers, you have to be uh, also supporting this. So the customers, your internal customers, rely on this and say, if I'm going to use the, the golden path for deploy a static web application, and there is a problem, I can come to you. This goes all under the uh, infrastructure as a product thing. And of course, there's a lot, lot more, so monitoring performance, staying always up to date. Okay. What are the benefits for the business? Because again, we don't do this because we are an NGO or you know, we love uh, humans and we want to make everybody happy. Maybe there is this, uh, people who think about this, but most of the time there is a business benefit behind all the, the things we are doing. So of course, we reduce the toil of software develop deployments and development. Um, I don't know if the word toil is used anymore nowadays. I mean, when the SRE stuff come up from Google, I mean, in my company before, everybody talked about toil. Everything was a toil. You know, not even, hey, this is a toil, this is a toil. So I'm not sure if toil is still a thing. Um, improve engineer productivity. This is really important. And of course, uh, provide a consistent, uh, consistency and confidence in your way and help to scale teams. So these are some points you can add many, many other points. Again, that's a lightning talk. So at the end, we come up with something like this with this uh, platform approach. We have our developers who who, uh, who consumes our services. We have our platform engineering team who built the services and they all use this platform. And I pointed some points out which are requirements I think for our platform we're going to build. It has to be flexible. It has to be extensible because uh, technology uh, changes and we have to, uh, to also adapt and get new technology in. Composable, which is very important and cloud agnostic. So yeah, platform engineering. So, um, how much do I have? So, um, want to see a reference implementation that's you all here. So, I want to present you the kebab stack. Just one thing for the name. So, the idea was about this. If you've ever been to Europe, for example, uh, kebab is a specific meal you will find most of the time. I had to switch the B to P because it doesn't make sense at the end. So, when I presented the name to my European friends, everybody was crazy. They're like, wow, this is the best talk you can ever do from the name. When I did the same with my American colleagues, they're like, what? <laughs> what is that? Nobody understands. So, um, probably I will rename this to El Pastor Stack. And then I have also a little bit more uh, letters available and uh, also the people uh, across the pond will understand me also what I'm talking about. So, what is the kebab stack in, in a detail? So, let's t take out this here from our app delivery team, the platform capability map. So, the K stands for Kubernetes, everything runs on Kubernetes, Kubernetes is our, uh, our control plane. Then we have the external secrets operator for doing all the magic. And external secrets operator is really awesome. You can push, pull, you can push to different clusters. So this thing is really, really cool. Um, we have backstage, of course. Uh, I love backstage. Uh, no, no matter what other people say about this, backstage is really a cool thing. And if you have the size, you can also spin up some people learning TypeScript. So this is the thing. You will see, uh, maybe you, you see backstage, you're like, why should I do this and so on? You're maybe not at the moment at this uh, level to, to adopt backstage. Uh, Argo, of course, the A stands for Argo and the P stands for Pulumi. We're using the Pulumi Kubernetes operator to, to manage all the infrastructure, all the stuff people can order on our platform. So that's, that's the thing, so there's uh, the thing. And we also use Pulumi to Ignite. You will see this in a little bit more detail. As a bonus, Kiverno. So you will ask me, say, hey, Engin, does it make the kebab? So my idea was that the K of kebab is two times in. So I'm sorry for this. So the K is double here. Okay, reference implementation. We Ignite with Pulumi CLI. We Ignite our hub cluster. Um, spin up a minimal version of Argo CD and just point this and say, hey, this is all your app of application set or F app of apps. Please uh, roll this out, including yourself and full blown with decks and everything you need and install the, 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 the missing components into it. So then, yeah, we, we created a fire. Next point is developer one comes in 
and says, hey, I would like to order a development cluster. So we use, again, uh, Backstage. We log into Backstage. We create a pull request or directly commit in the Git repository where Argo is looking at it. Argo ceases and spin up a V cluster because we want to save money. Second use case is I want a real cluster. Developer comes to the Backstage, selects a, a software template, and then gets also um, uh, Argo sees this. Uh, Backstage creates all the resources, also the Pulumi. Kubernetes resource for creating an EKS cluster, and this gets rolled out into our hub cluster, and then the infrastructure gets spin up. And while we're doing this, we, we also uh, register the, the, the clusters as a spoke cluster, as a yeah, as a spoke cluster to our hub cluster. So we get also the hub and spoke approach. And for the people who need uh, maybe everything apart of Kubernetes, they can still use backstage and order a story there, and the Pulumi operator does the same. So this is absolutely Onagi style. And uh, to follow up, I, I did a Git repository where you can see the reference implementation. There will be follow up talks where I do also a demo. And with this, uh, I'm open for questions. So, yes. Um, you are on purpose not using cross plane? I, I wanted to show a different uh, implementation. That's the thing. So cross plane is one thing, Terraform is one thing. And Pulumi is one thing, so you can use Pulumi also as Kubernetes. You are applying Kubernetes CMS to Pulumi. Yes, yes, you can. Um, Pulu the Pulumi operator has its own CR where you can define uh, also the infrastructure inside Pulumi using Pulumi YAML. Pulumi supports YAML as a language also. And then you have the, the Kubernetes feeling and the, the GitOps feeling because you do uh, everything via your used right. stuff without uh, introducing several different uh, infrastructure tools. We had this last time, last week with a customer, they're like, hey, we want to use this tool here and this tool here. I'm like, are you sure you want the split brain situation and you want really support the stuff? So there is a way to do everything in one 